everyone, in today's video I'm going to do a watercolour piece. It's also a piece that was won by one of my YouTube winners from the giveaway. And I'm going to paint Seiryu, the Azura Dragon. So I hope you're going to enjoy this video. Let's get on with it. So before I start the tutorial, I will quickly show you which products I use mainly for this piece. And I apologize if you hear a cat in the distance crying his eyes out. Then it's my cat Ed, who is very hungry but still has to wait 30 minutes for his food. So yeah, let's get on with it. Um, so for the main part, I've been using these two colors from the Dr. PH Martin Hydro Spinart watercolors. Um, they have another kind of watercolor in their line, which is, I think, called the concentrated watercolors. Uh, people often mix them up and co are confused by them, but uh, the concentrated watercolors are not light fast. They are dye based and these, the Hydra's Fine Art watercolors, are pigment based and are very light fast, um, according to the company. Um, so I'm using the turquoise blue and the blue aqua. Um, other things I will be using for this piece is a teal color of the Sennelier watercolor uh, uh, pens and uh, a white gel pen but also the Dr. PH Martin iridis iridescent calligraphy color, uh, copper plate gold and uh, I'll be using a lot of my favorite the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. And that's about this. Um, I will also put down in, in the uh, video description which materials I've used so you can look it up in all ease. Anyway, let's move on to a tutorial. First, I'm going to sketch out my dragon. I'm using the Gravitint 8B by The Wend, which is water soluble. I start out sketching my basic shapes, so I'm using a little circle to pinpoint where I want the head. And then I draw a reversed S-line to guideline its body. It's important at this point not to stress about the character's details or characteristics. At this point you just want to focus on your composition and getting your basic shapes right. You can always come back and flesh things out if you, if you are insecure about sketching. On, in, on expensive paper, then do your first sketch on an expensive sketch or print paper. This way you can always transfer your sketch over with transfer papers like carbon and graphite transfer sheets. Once you've got your basic sketch laid out, you can go add your desired details, such as facial details, horns, fingers and nails, and etc. Remember it's a dragon, so you can do with it whatever you want. As long as you keep the design balanced, detailing is fun, so it's easy to get carried away. So make sure to stop in time, as you don't want your design to become cluttered. <laughs> After I added its bushy mane, I was happy with the sketch and decided it was time to start inking. I am using a Cupic Multiliner 0.3, because the design is quite intricate, I am using a very fine nib. The finer your pen's nib, the easier it is to catch the smallest details. But it does take longer to ink with fine nibs. I start out by inking the face because it's fairly small and has a lot of detail compared to the rest of its body. Then I ink the overlapping parts, such as the whiskers, horns and manes. This way I'm less prone to make mistakes while inking. The advantage of using a water-soluble graphite pencil is that once you have inked your drawing, you don't have to erase the pencil lines after when you work with water media. The pencil lines will just disappear once you start applying watercolors. I decided I wanted some highlight effects on some part of the main, so I won't ink these. Now that everything is inked, it already looks nice, but it could still use a little something extra to make it look a bit more dynamic. 
To create a bit more interest in the line work, I add some more weight in certain areas by just simply adding a bit more ink. I usually do this at areas where it feels natural, such as curved lines or areas that seem like they would have quite some weight to them. For example, its belly and the underside of its bum and tail where the lines curve. I also like to use this technique to put some definition to the muscles and the claws just to make those appear stronger or mightier. It is a legendary mighty beast after all. Once you apply this technique, you will really be able to tell what amazing difference this will make for your line art. It will look less flat and will have more character this way. Also, it's a lot of fun. I really love how this technique brings your line work to life. Now that the line work is done, I'm masking off the parts I want to keep white with the Molotow masking marker. I hope I said that right. I have a product review of this marker over at my channel, but I will leave a link in the description for it. It works basically the same as normal masking fluid, but it is less messy and easier to control. I'm just going to mask off the uninked part of the mane and the tail. And now the fun part begins. Painting with watercolors! Before I put the paint down, I like to wet the paper. This way the paint will bloom beautifully and you can get some real amazing effects this way. I love to do this on my backgrounds and let the paint and the water paint their own picture. For the backgrounds, I am using the Hydrus Liquid Watercolors from Dr. PH Martin. I am using only two colors for the background, um, the blue aqua and the turquoise blue. I like to keep my palette limited so the colors will be fresh and harmonious looking. Especially with paints, it's easy to create mud when working with many different colors. Most of the background colors will come back in a dragon later. I found these particular paints reared really great when I used kitchen salt on them. I got some really unexpected cool patterns this way. If you look at the low left corner, you may be able to see what I mean. On the dark parts, I got some really fun looking blooming effects that way. The brushes that I'm using on this piece are a size 2 grey squirrel brush and a Chinese calligraphy brush. These can hold a lot of water and paint, so they are perfect for watercolor paintings. The Chinese one also holds a very fine tip, so you can do excellent fine details with these too. As you can see, with just two colors and a bit of salt, you can create really fun and interesting looking backgrounds with watercolors. Also, I love how fast you can work with this medium, minus the drying times in between. I think the background did only take me 10 to 15 minutes to create. Moving on to the dragon, I again wet the part with water before I start painting. For the body, I am using the teal color of the Sennelier watercolor paint. I want to try and stay true to the color palette of the of the legendary azure dragon, which means a lot of aqua green blue colors. Again, I am using a bit of salt here and there to create some texture that could pass for scales on the body. Here I am using a white gel pen to draw some strands of hair on the mane and the tail. This will make those parts less chunky and more wispy. Make sure your paint is fully dry underneath, otherwise your gel pen might refuse and give you some trouble. Then I go back in with the teal Saint-Rolier paint and block in more of the dragon's body. While those parts are still damp, I add bits of the turquoise blue of the Hydrus paint to add more value and interest on the dragon's body. The same steps I repeat on the belly, chest and neck always making sure the parts I am going to paint are damp so the paints can flow nicely and create the desired effects. I found that the Hydra's paints are really vivid, they really pop off your paper.
For this piece, I am using the Fabriano Artistico cold press cotton. I believe it was a 300 grams paper. It is quite heavy weight, which is a must when you work with watercolors. The heavier the weight, the less it will warp, buckle or tear. I haven't tried many watercolor papers yet, but I do really like this surface to paint on so far. But of course, if you know of some other great watercolor papers, then let me know in the comment section. The head of my dragon is quite small and intricate, but here you can see how well I can paint in the tiny details with the Chinese calligraphy brush, as it holds its fine tip brilliantly. I don't know the brand's name unfortunately, as it is all written in Chinese. <laughs> but these were goat-haired ones, as was stated on the website I bought them from. Now that the body is blocked in, I want to refine the shadow some more. So it's time to bring about my favorite watercolor markers, the Zig Clean Color Wheel Brush Pens by Kuretake. I'm using colors of the same colors I used on the dragon previously, mostly greens and blues. Once I drew the color in, I softened them up with a wet brush, creating some soft shadows. Of course I could do this with paint, but I want a bit more control here, so with the water soluble markers it just feels a bit more safe. I felt my dragon was a bit too much at the blue side, so I added some more of the aqua blue to the dragon's body with the hydrus paint. I wasn't too sure of what color to use on the mane and tail, but I decided, decided to go with the aqua blue hydrus paint for now, to lay down the first layers and see how it would look. I could always add a different color on top if I needed to later. Also, keep in mind watercolor paint will dry up a lot lighter compared to when you apply it wet to your paper. The more water you use, the lighter the look of the color once it's dried. If you want your colors to look darker, you can either layer your colors or make your brush more dry by using less water. I decided the body could use some more shadows and more contrast. So I used a deep blue zig marker to draw in some subtle shadows all over the dragon's body, mainly under the mane and on the limbs where the most of the muscles show through, also on the end of the fingers and toes to help them come a bit more forward from the rest of the drawing. As you can see the body of the dragon stands out a whole lot more and starts to pop out of the background and it only took a wee bit of work in just one color to achieve this. Now that I am happy with how the body looks, I decided I wanted to add a nice but slight touch of purple into the mane and tail, just so the dragon will stand out just a bit more and add some interest in the overall color sheen, as at the moment there are just aquatic blue-green colors which make, makes it a bit bland as it is. Again, I am using a Zig marker with a vivid purple color and add little strokes at the root of the fur so once I hit it with a wet brush it will give you the illusion that the fur shimmers bright at the ends of each strand. Again, just notice how one color can change the look of the overall piece in a positive way. By adding the purple, I got even more contrast on my dragon and it even gave him a more powerful look. If you ever feel your picture looks flat or is missing that bit of punch, you just might need to check if your contrast is right. The easiest way to check this is to make a photo of your piece and to turn it into a grayscale on a computer, with for example Photoshop or any other modifying programs. If your picture looks very grey, you will need to add more contrast to your piece by adding either dark colors or lighter colors. And often you don't need to add that much either to make a great difference. 
I decided to add a wee bit of purple on the bridge of the dragon's nose and its tongue, just to bring those smaller details out some more. Then for its funky long horns, I'm using the cold copper plate calligraphy ink from Dr. PH Martin. I've tried some kind of gold colors such as acrylic gold tube paints from various brands and the Liquitex acrylic ink. And also the Gansai Tolbe Starry colors. None of them were very opaque and needed several layers. Though I have to say that the Gonsai Tombi ones are very pretty and I like them very much. So I was pleasantly surprised by how opaque the Dr. PH Martin one was. I only needed one layer and I got perfect coverage. So if you're looking for a good gold ink, I really recommend this one. To make the horns a bit more interesting, I added a bit of the deep blue from the zig marker on the root of each horn to get a cool gradu a graduating effect. And finally I added some of that gold on all the toenails and its beak. Then for the final touch I used my white gel pen to draw a white edge all around my dragon to make him stand out even more and to get a fun effect. I hope this tutorial was helpful and fun to watch. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Have a good one!